Here is the summary of the short story, The Hundred Dresses, Part 1, by Elsor Astor, also known as Eleanor Estes. On Monday, Wanda Petronsky was not in her class seat, but nobody noticed her absence. She usually sat in the corner of room 13, which housed the rough boys. These boys did not score high marks were the loudest and sat in the dirtiest section of the room. Wanda was a quiet girl without any friends. She came from Boggins Street, which was the poorest neighborhood in the town. She sat in the corner of room 13, overlooked by everyone. The only time anyone noticed Wanda was after school hours when they made fun of Wanda. On Wednesday, Peggy and Maddie noticed that Wanda was not in class. The reason they noticed Wanda's absence was because she made them late to class. Peggy was the most popular girl in school and Maddie was her closest friend. Usually, they waited for Wanda so they could make fun of her. No one in room 13 had a name like Wanda. Wanda came to school alone and wore a faded blue dress. Though her dress was clean, it was wrinkled and loose. Peggy, outwardly polite, would ask Wanda how many dresses she had in her closet. Wanda would reply she had a hundred dresses, all made up of silk and velvet. They would let her go and laugh behind her back. They didn't believe that Wanda, who wore a faded blue dress, had a hundred dresses. They would also ask her how many shoes she had. Wanda would reply, she had 60 pairs of shoes. The girls again did not believe her, so they would ask Wanda if they were all of the same color. Wanda would reply that they were all of different colors. Peggy was not a cruel girl. She did not believe that Wanda had a hundred dresses and therefore felt justified in making fun of Wanda. Maddie, however, did not feel good about teasing Wanda. Sometimes, when Peggy politely mocked Wanda, Maddie would stay silent and quiet. So, she was glad when Wanda did not come to school that day. While Maddie worked on an arithmetic problem, she thought about writing a note to Peggy, asking her to stop this game. But Maddie was afraid. She imagined how she would feel if Peggy told everyone that she was wearing Peggy's old dress. So she tore the note and hoped Peggy would stop making fun of Wanda. One. Peggy was the most popular girl in the school, while Wanda was a girl from the poorest part of the town who did not have any kind of friends. Thinking of Wanda's dresses, Maddie thought of the drawing and coloring contest in the school. For girls, the contest was about drawing dresses and for boys, designing motor boats. She knew Peggy would win the contest since Peggy could draw very well. The next day, it was raining so Peggy and Maddie ran straight to school without waiting for Wanda. Maddie wished Peggy good luck and hoped she would win the contest. When they entered the classroom, they were dazzled by the drawings that had been put up all over the classroom. Miss Mason, their teacher, waited until all the students were gathered in the classroom. Then she announced the winner of, for the boys' contest. She then informed the class that while most of the girls submitted one or two drawings, one girl from the class had drawn pictures of a hundred dresses. She then happily announced that Wanda Petronsky was the winner of the girls' contest. Though Wanda was not present that day to collect the medal, Miss Mason hoped that she would be in class tomorrow to collect the award. For now, Miss Mason asked her students to take a walk around the class and admire Wanda's beautiful drawings. Maddie, looking around, recognized some of the drawings and whispered excitedly to Peggy. 
Maddie realized that all the drawings were made by Wanda.